Hi there, my name is Dr. Figueredo. I'm a PhD scientist from the University of British Columbia and Harvard University. And today I'm going to talk about cancer, viruses, and the immune system. What is cancer? Well, cancer is a genetic disease. It's a microevolutionary process which allows for survival and proliferation of those cells that are best able to adapt and manipulate their microenvironment. So it's really a natural selection process that's occurring at the molecular and microscopic level. It's survival of the fittest. And the immune system plays a crucial part of this cancer microenvironment. And it plays a critical role in determining the balance between tumor growth or destruction. So the classic model of prostate cancer starts off with a single epithelial cell that undergoes a few genetic mutations, eventually providing it a selective advantage to uh, result in a histological cancer. And as these cells continue to multiply and proliferate, eventually it ends up with as a local disease. And these, uh, these cancer cells can then extracervate into the uh, bloodstream and uh, eventually they'll target the bone and, and this is called metastatic disease. Now clearly what's missing from this classic model of prostate cancer is the role of the leukocyte infiltrate. So a tumor does not exist in the absence of its microenvironment. So a successful tumor has to be able to recruit and functionally alter immune cells from surveillance towards assistance. So before we get into what the immune system does, let's talk about where these cells come from. So they're also called hemopoietic cells, and they originate from a pluripotent stem cell in the bone marrow. Now this pluripotent stem cell gives rise to lymphoid precursors and myeloid precursor. The lymphoid precursor gives rise to B cells, T cells, and natural killer cells, whereas the myeloid precursor gives rise to basophils, neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, which eventually become macrophages at the tissues. And both of these lineages, both the lymphoid and the myeloid, give rise to dendritic cells, which are functionally indistinguishable once they become mature. So in general, the lymphoid lineage gives rise to cells that are responsible for the adaptive response, and the myeloid lineage gives rise to cells that are responsible for the innate response. However, as we'll see today, there are exceptions. So today we're going to talk about T cells, dendritic cells, and macrophages in the adaptive response. So it's, it's really this crosstalk between the tumor and its microenvironment that allows a successful tumor to proliferate. And uh, so a tumor has to send out signals to immune cells and convince these immune cells to send signals back to the tumor to promote tumor growth and proliferation. And these immune cells also send out uh, additional signals to promote angiogenesis and vascularization, resulting in oxygenation of the tumor site. So this is an image that was taken from my PhD thesis where I described the model for relaxing mediated immune regulation in the context of inflamed tumor tissue. And it's really a counter current principle where high levels of a chemokine or cytokine are produced at the tumor site and uh, they produce a gradient that is counter to the pathway of the blood cells. And so these mononuclear cells detect relaxing in the bloodstream and they're recruited to cross the endothelial wall where eventually uh, they become uh, transitional monocyte macrophages. And when they, when they finally reach the tumor site, they become fully activated macrophages. And so in this uh, context of high levels of cytokines and chemokines, these macrophages can be switched from a immunosurveilling phenotype to an immunosuppressive phenotype. And so that's really what this adaptive response is. It's a skewing of monocyte derived macrophages towards a cancer promoting or inhibitory role in progression.
So in the inflammatory milieu of the tumor tissue, many uh, different cytokines and chemokines are produced. And uh, depending on this combination of cytokines and chemokines, the macrophages will either become an M1 inflammatory phenotype or an M2 immunosuppressive phenotype. And it's this M2 phenotype that's most often associated with tumor promotion. And these are also called tumor-associated macrophages. So now that we have some background on cancer and the immune system, it's useful to ask if we can use a model of viral infection as an effective means to potentially treat cancer. Well, let's see what happens during a viral infection. The virus will enter the cell and will start synthesizing proteins in the cytosol. Now these peptide fragments are bound then to MAC class 1 molecules in the endoplasmic reticulum where eventually they're expressed on the cell surface. And the cytotoxic T cell can then recognize this MAC class 1 molecule and target the cell for destruction. So the question arises, how does this T cell know that this cell is infected? How does it distinguish it between, between this cell and a normal cell? Well, it, uh, this, is where, this is where the role of the dendritic cells become important, where they migrate between the tissues and they induce tolerance because they lack the necessary co-stimulatory molecules. So when they eventually encounter a pathogen, they will rapidly mature and migrate to the lymph nodes. Now later on, the T cells will enter the lymph nodes across high endothelial venules in the cortex. And the modern antigen presented by macrophages and dendritic cells. Now, T cells that do not encounter specific antigen will leave the lymph nodes through the lymphatics, and T cells that encounter specific antigen will proliferate and differentiate into effector cells. And these cells can multiply 100 to 1,000 fold. And uh, once activated, eventually they'll, they'll return to the bloodstream where they can target the infected epithelial cells. So tolerance is a prevention of immune response to self antigen in the absence of a co-stimulatory signal. So here we see a naive T cell is stimulated by a virus-infected dendritic cell that has this co-stimulatory signal. And once this T cell is, is activated, it can then uh, recognize that same antigen on an infected epithelial cell and target that cell for destruction. By contrast, a naive T cell that recognizes self-antigen on an epithelial cell in the absence of that co-stimulatory signal will become energic. And uh, this antigen-specific signal alone makes these cells unresponsive. And this, this same kind of uh, energy can also be induced by a dendritic cell that lacks the co-stimulatory signal. Now, once these T cells are unresponsive, they remain so even when they encounter self antigen on a dendritic cell that has that co stimulatory signal. So, ironically, it's the same mechanism of tolerance that allows many cancer cells to proliferate unchecked. So, the key for cancer immunotherapy will be to obtain cancer specific antigens that can be used as vaccines. Injection of this vaccine into cancer patients allow for training of the immune system to recognize this antigen as foreign. And this will promote an immune attack against the tumor, somewhat analogous as to how an immune system attacks virus-infected cells. So what we want to do is we want to replicate this system of viral infection and train the immune system to recognize a cancer antigen as foreign so that it can then target these cancer cells specifically for destruction without impacting and inducing collateral damage on otherwise normal cells. So that's really the key for cancer immunotherapy. It's to obtain these cancer-specific antigens. 
So I hope you enjoyed this talk. My name is Dr. Figueredo. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.